My name is Emily Bynan and today I'm going to talk about Mozart. More specifically, the exposition of the first movement of the G major flute concerto, that is bars 31 to 91, and particularly how we could prepare this for an orchestral audition, because this piece is so often asked. Now, at the risk of stating the obvious, of course, a jury at an orchestral audition is looking to choose a future colleague. So make sure that your performance is fresh, enthusiastic and has a good energy. So if you're bored of practicing the G major flute concerto, put it away for a while and have a go at looking at some other pieces, maybe one of the flute quartets or one of the violin concertos. So it's a beautiful transcription of the clarinet concerto. So play around with some of the ideas that I'm going to offer you today with those other pieces and then you'll come back to the G major concerto with a fresh attitude. Now you probably won't believe this, but the jury is on your side. They want you to play the best that you can play. What they are not going to do is give you the benefit of the doubt. So do make sure that you offer them a wide dynamic range and a wide range of articulations. So in general, we're looking for a clean, elegant sound and a transparent texture. And we're playing a piece of classical repertoire. So here are a few style tips you'll need to be aware of. Trills in classical repertoire should always start on the upper note. Long and on the beat, you're adding a dissonance to that chord to make it extra spicy. So, always an upper note trill, except a few circumstances. The first one is if the note before the trill is already an upper note. Then you can play the upper note again, but you don't have to. Listen for this example in bar 39 to 40. And the second case where you don't have to add the upper note trill is if the upper note would break the melodic line. There's this example from bar 82. And this example from bar 71. In both those cases, you can add an upper note trill if you want to, but you don't have to. And the third example is if the note that the trill's on is already an appoggiatura. It's already adding spice to that chord. Look at this example in bar 67. If I play an upper note trill here, that would be an A, then that would fit into the chord. Whereas the G is a nice spicy dissonance. And so there it's much nicer to start the trill from the G. And now we'll come to what I call the golden rule. And that is when you're playing classical repertoire, a slur almost always means some kind of release of the sound or if you like, a diminuendo. The next stylistic issue that I'm going to address are these small notes, the appoggiaturas. And they basically come in three varieties in this exposition. The first one we come across already at the end of bar 32 and going into bar 33. And in this case, they're long and on the beat and take half the value of the note to which they're attached. The second version that we come to is in bar 46 in the second subject. And in this case, they come between the same note. So in this case, the rule is that they should be fast. Now, we can't talk about these small notes without addressing bar 70. Let's just compare bar 60 and bar 70. Now, in my opinion, Mozart can't possibly have wanted these two bars to sound the same. Otherwise, it would have been so much simpler to write bar 70 in the same way as he did bar 60. And I think these two bars are about a scale from A to A. So in the case of bar 70, I play these notes short and before the main note. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is articulation. Now remember that Mozart was probably most famous for his operas, and I'd like you to think of the articulation as being like text. 
We need to understand what the words mean. And in an audition, offer a variety of types of staccato because a dot can mean many things. It just means separate notes, non legato. I've got a rule of thumb, which you might find helpful. If two notes are close together, maybe even the same note, then play them very short so that we really hear the distinction. If an interval is wider, then you can use a much broader, longer stroke. And I would like you to consider using single tonguing for as much as possible. Most of the time that sounds much crisper than double tonguing. When we think about dynamics in an orchestral audition, I think it's very important to present a wide range. Now, in the case of Mozart, obviously I'm not talking about PPP to FFF, but I do think it's important to present a wide variety of characters, making a little flute opera, if you like. Make sure that your characters come to life. Phrasing is very important in Mozart. We're looking for something sounding very natural and elegant, which means that we need to understand exactly the direction of each and every phrase. Think about what's the most important note in each phrase and play towards that and then come away from it afterwards. Figure out the skeleton of the phrasing underneath by working out the harmony. What's the harmonic pulse? Have we got two different harmonies in a bar or one or four? or maybe one harmony in two bars. So have a clear game plan. Where's your softest point? Where's your loudest point? Where's your shortest staccato? And where's your most beautiful singing legato? And please think about which kind of edition you're going to work from. I like to see what Mozart actually wrote. So I like to work from an Urtext edition, something like Berenreiter or Henle, and the most playable piano part I found has been the Novello edition from Trevor Wine. And all three of these have a lovely section about writing your own cadenzas. Before moving on to working through the whole exposition bar by bar, which will be the next video, here are three tips to leave you with. The first is practice this at an uncomfortably slow tempo something like a hundred, because then you're forced to really consider where each phrase is going towards or coming away from. Practice with a metronome with two beats in the bar. You can start off by using the first and third beat of the bar, but I think it's much more fun to work on the syncopation. And finally, make sure that your performance exudes joy and pleasure in playing this glorious music. Now I'm going to go on in the next video and talk about the whole exposition bar by bar.